like with the the two hundred dollar attachment, like it's not like a like I'm doing the same things as other people. I I have to pay more to do the same things. I have to you know, if somebody gifts me a juicer, some people most people would juice it themselves with their own hands. Um, I I had to buy a juicer for that. So it's not like it's you know if you have any out of pocket expenses as a result of this accident well, there's little things like before I, you know, you come from the grocery store, you you have to, you have to. I bike around. I can't bike those long distances. So you either have to do like an Uber Eats, some ethically against, or like you know what I mean. It's like incidental. But like, how do you really map that? Having to buy a new wardrobe, like you know, I was the same size as high school pretty much for ten years. You know, it's not like. If you're still pretty much wearing the same clothing as you were, like, a year out of high school, I graduated high school at 17, at 27 years old, 29 years old when the accident happened. So, I had to buy new clothing. Like, what do you, you know what I mean? Like, at 29, it's not your metabolism is changing. It's, like, a different issue. So, um, how do you, how do you put a number on that? Can you put a number on how much out-of-pocket expenses you incur? The thing is, is for example, I don't believe in buying clothing that were not that are new. I don't believe in it. Majority of my clothing are secondhand clothes. So um, you'd go to a thrift store and stuff. I just believe for the same reason that I buy bike. Um, I'm saving the environment. It's like cash payments to a secondhand clothing store because, like I said, I don't believe in it. It's just to me, it's just it's a waste. It's, it's just a, a waste is bad for the environment. So how can I put a thing on, like, I would not have bought clothing because I guarantee you that my clothing are timeless. Like, I'm buying clothing from the 50s, from the 60s. I have a, this dress right here is a 1970s, 1960s um, Valentino. Like, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not like a, then somebody can be like, oh, you could go on to Walmart and got that for $15. And you're like, made by child labor, um, um, it's not going to last for a year. You know what I mean? As opposed to this thing's older than your mother. Like, it's, it's just how do you put a number on it? So you don't have a, a number for your out-of-pocket expenses? I mean, I can put a number on would I have had to get a mixer if I wasn't disabled? The mixer cost $1,000. Would I have had to get the juicer if I wasn't, like, disabled? The juicer cost $500. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you have to buy higher quality things to do the same things as other people. That's just, like, that's just the fact of life. Do you use social media? No, not really. I'm the only person in the world with my name. Do you have a Facebook account? It's in Hindi now for some reason. So, I mean, I guess technically, but it got hacked years ago. Or I presume it's Hindi. I think Google said it's in Tamil. What's your name on Facebook? I don't think you can type it. Let me see. How about Instagram? Do you use Instagram? No. Do you have an account on Instagram? No. LinkedIn? Hasn't logged in in years. But yeah. It still says Voda Bauer. And I've been going there quite some time. Twitter? No, no. <laughs> I'm done. Not dumb enough for that. What was that? Snapchat? Wait a minute. I didn't hear the last question. I asked if she used she had a Twitter account. Okay. She said no. Then I asked Snapchat. It was Snapchat no. account. I'm like 18 years old. They have apps to basically, basically be able to uh, download anything you send on that. I'm trying to deal with uh Secure, uh, between Chinese and Russians from trying to do investments. I'm not trying to risk my career, future career for what? What about TikTok? Do you have a TikTok account? No. I tried for five seconds. The algorithm makes absolutely no sense. What's your name on TikTok? I don't have it. If you tried for five seconds, what was your name for those five seconds? That's why I couldn't log back in. I couldn't remember it. I had to get a new cell phone. I couldn't remember it. (sighs) 
Did you have a cell phone at the time of the accident? Yeah. What was your carrier? I don't remember. I wasn't paying the bill. Mine paying the bill. Okay, so well, I am currently on my parents' plan. Um, at the time, my this girl I knew, uh, this guy that liked her, paid for our cell phone bill. the same cell phone numbers you did back then? No. No. What was your cell phone number back then? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't think anybody would know. You have a cell phone now? Yeah. What's the name of your carrier? AT&T. What's your number now? Seven seven four. Is it on record? You can go off the record for the rest of it. Off the record. Seven seven four. Seven six four. Four two two two. Four two two three. No, there's three twos. Four two 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 two. Whatever. Four two two two. All right, back on the record. Just confirming that you provided it. Um. I'm going to go through my notes, but I think I've covered everything. So I'm going to let somebody else ask some questions for now while I go through to make sure I have everything written down. Good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Joe Michalowski. I represent the driver of the car that you were in at the time of the accident. Mm hmm you, you indicated at the time of the accident you were... Uh, planning on seeking out a teaching opportunity in China, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes, sir. Had you applied to any school or employer in China uh, before the action occurred? No, sir. I had tried to do real estate because I wanted to do more. I um, My goal was always to work with the International Bank that's in Shanghai, so it was more of a by any means necessary type of ordeal of just getting my foot into China and then trying to finagle my way into finishing my degree and um, uh, working there. Do you know if you would have needed some type of certificate uh, as a teacher to be able to teach children in China? TOEFL. You need your TOEFL. Most college, most places want you to have your bachelor's. Some places just don't pay you as much, you need to have your TOEFL. But then in that, those cases, those kids, those people will supplement their income through, like, modeling or just literally repair, repairing places as an English-speaking person. But you need to have your TOEFL. Um, and in order to have your TOEFL, they also require you to have certain fluency uh, called HSK. So uh, HSK1, HSK2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. At the time of the accident, you, you had not secured your TOEFL certificate, correct? No, I was, like I said, I worked on it. I created thousands, hundreds of flashcards um, to learn how to be able to read Mandarin and to speak it um, on my tablet. Sorry. I'll have to call you back. Thank you. Um, You mentioned your real estate license. Had, you mentioned your real estate license lapsed. Why did you allow your real estate license to lapse? I'm somebody that doesn't like to leave things to chance. If I can't predict it, like even when it comes to a dating app, I literally predict things. Like I literally, that's what I want to do. That's when I study. Everything goes into data. Since no one could quantify to me how it would be the successful, how what it would take to become successful in real estate, I was just like, it makes absolutely no sense for me to continue in this field until someone can guarantee it. Because everyone who you're showing me who's become successful, it's been either luck or networking. None of them have worked harder in any quantifiable way than anybody else. So uh, it just doesn't make any sense. So for me, it's just like I said, everything comes down to data. And so it just was not working out mathematically for it to be like, all right, this makes sense. I'm just not one of those hustle grind people. Like, oh, well, if you hustle and you grind, like, 
are you doing it? Is it making